There's over 30 million open source repositories on GitHub alone. Some of those popular and best pieces of software ever written are actually all open source. But the question I want to ask and explore today is what makes a good open source project? So if you've been writing software for a little bit, you've more than likely come across an open source project in your time, either directly or indirectly. And to be honest, some of the most popular modern day software is actually all open source, such as React, the most popular web framework today. There's literally Linux, the foundation of modern computing. There's also Docker Engine and Kubernetes, just to name a few others. And lastly, literally Git, the whole reason why we're able to have version control and have websites like GitHub, Codeberg, Bitbucket, GitLab, whatever, to host our projects. But there's also a lot of other open source projects that are heavily loved by the community and are growing every single day, such as Neovim. I use Neovim. It's my favorite way to write code. I have my Neovim config file in my GitHub repository. There's Bun, the JavaScript runtime bundler, test runner, and package manager all in one. It exploded onto the scene, 80,000 stars, created by Jared and the company Oven. It's extremely popular right now. And there's Laravel as well, which is the web application framework built on PHP. But a lot of people who don't really like JavaScript or TypeScript or even the Node ecosystem can jump onto PHP and use Laravel and spin up very, very strong applications pretty seamlessly. And it's heavily loved by the community. You see, it's one thing to have one project that's open source, but it's entirely different being an entire company that's open source with varying degrees of success across many different open source repositories. So this company also happens to be the newest sponsor of my channel, Charm. You see, Charm is 167,000 stars and growing across their 40 non-repositories on GitHub. They primarily use Go, which I mean makes so much sense if you've seen my videos before. I'm a Go guy. I use Go all the time. I have different courses on Go. And they just have a growing repository of different projects, all written in Go, all open source, all helping users like myself to create awesome projects. And the repository I chose today to kind of go deeper and showcase a strong open source project is none other than Bubble Tea. For Charm is about 35,000 stars right here. It has 137 contributors. It is 100% written Go. And to be honest, I just think it's a really healthy example of a strong open source project. I'm going to get into it right now. And so now is a good time to talk about the elements that I personally think are core and essential to any open source project and can really make or break a good one from a great one from an absolute stunning one. So starting with community, one thing you want to avoid is kind of this mono contributor where it's fully just one person who's continuously making all the issues, making all the pull requests and not really allowing other contributors involved kind of defeats the purpose of open source. But another thing that's really important in the community aspect for any project is, are there links where people can go and click on to discuss ideas of how to make the project better beyond just the issues tab on GitHub? An example of this would be like Discord and Twitter, just communities where people can get together and discuss their ideas, share their thoughts on the overall project health and ways to improve it. Now, this leads us to our second point, maintenance. Now, a project like Bubble Tea has been around for a little bit. You still want to see it actively maintained. It's not going to have these jaw-dropping features developed every month or so, but you can still see those active mains just two days ago was the last commit. And these are probably gonna be like chores, fixes, bug fixes that people find from the community. Another aspect of maintenance is making sure that pull requests are active, they're getting the proper love and appreciation, and that the issues tabs isn't being stale. The third point, which in my opinion is one of the most important ones, is documentation, starting with the README. The README is really the first thing anyone's going to see when they open your project. Does your README stand out? Does it make it obvious into what the product is going to do? What problem does it solve? How is it built? You can see here the uh, Bubble Tea README has a bunch of different examples of the tutorial, which is actually in an example page. So you can scroll up, you can see there's examples and actual tutorials in the Bubble Tea repository. And this example page shows you a ton of different examples of how to use Bubble Teas for a chat kind of completion. You can see the main dog go, how it's written. You can see the GIF supporting it, and you can see a bunch of different things here. You can even look at a mouse example or a result example, a spinner example. Click this and it's the same structure of the spinner GIF. You can see what we're going to be building. And then the main dog go explains on how exactly to build it. You can even see that the readme here goes deeper and showcasing how everything is structured in the repository, the philosophy behind it with explaining the different methods with the update method, initialization, the model, the view method, etc, etc. And I also really like that even beyond the readme, even beyond the examples, there's also the actual official Go docs 
that are hosted on package.go.dev, which goes through all the different functions and gives you an explanation of how to use them and how to run them locally. And the last point that us as software engineers or individual contributors are going to look for is, is the code actually written in a way that makes you want to contribute? Now, the reason why I actually like the bubble tea structure is a little bit intricate because you can see here, it's very flatly structured, meaning there's only two directories, the examples and tutorials, but those are used for users like us to understand how to use this. All the other files are actually all here with the respective test. So for example, if a commands.go file, which is written with all the proper documentation here, you can see it gives an example of how everything is written with the actual code. It's all, it's pretty easy to read, very sequential. I mean, the majority of the code is actual comments and examples of how to do something where the code itself is pretty self-contained and pretty minimalistic. But even with the commands to go, there's also the commands underscore test.go, which shows you the exact expectation of what you should expect for this function and this commands file if you were to use it. So for me personally, I get very overwhelmed when looking into a project and there's a bunch of different directories, a bunch of different files, a bunch of code written everywhere and I don't even know where to begin. Whereas with this project in particular, everything's very containerized. The files are pretty small, like they're all like 200 lines and that's some the ones that are more with those examples I showed you before in the commands that go. But all the other ones are pretty simple like this. You can just read it, make sense. If you have any questions, you can go into the test file or just even grok it and put it into ChatGPT to discover if there's something that you're missing or maybe something you don't understand. Or even better, go into the Discord and ask them help and give them an explanation because this community and this team is very active in providing insights for their users. So with all that said, obviously I'm a big fan of Charm. I'm very happy for the sponsorship. And this is a good example of what I personally think is a good open source project. But let me know in the comment section down below, what project do you think also shows the elements of making a good open source project? Let me know what videos you wanna see in the future. And again, thank you all for your support. Subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next video. Power.